I kind of love that I'm wearing this sweater that is kind of like fucked up because it kind of goes with the book I'm going to talk to you about today. Hi guys, I'm Monica and welcome back to my channel Mooney Reads and today I have a really exciting video, a video that I wasn't expecting to film at all because what happened when I read a book this month was not something I was expecting to ever happen and that is that a book I read actually beat out Dune for my favorite book of all time. In fact, it almost beat out my favorite book of all time, which if you haven't, if you don't know what it is, I'll link a video up here that talks all about it. But it's called El Eterno Oscuro by Miguel Angel Yado. Here's a picture of it. It almost beat it. It's That one is still my favorite book of all time, but this one is my new favorite book and let me talk to you about it. If you have been on my channel for any length of time, you know that I don't do book reviews and that is because I don't even know where to start with book reviews. Like what do I even talk about when it comes to a book review? Do I talk about literary merit? What do I talk about? So basically what I'm going to do is I'm just going to gush about this book. Now first of all, let me get into the synopsis of this book and I'm going to keep it really short and sweet because I feel the less you know going into this book, the better. Like, honestly, the less you know, the better. So this book is about a woman named Rachel. And Rachel is a scavenger and she lives in this post-apocalyptic world where basically it's not your stereotypical post-apocalyptic world where machines have taken over or everything is kind of desolate. But in Jeff, in Jeff Van Der Meer's writing, which I think really reflects his childhood in the Fiji Islands. It's nature that kind of takes over the world and it's this idea of mutation, of nature mutating and the world that Rachel lives in is horrific. It's full of r radiation and disease and amongst all this, she finds this creature, which at first she thinks is a plant, and she calls it Born. Because basically, she feels like she is carrying this creature. And what ends up happening is that Born actually turns out to be sentient. And she becomes like a mother figure to Born. There is another character in this that is really important who is Wick, that is Rachel's partner. And that's where I'm going to leave you with the synopsis. I don't want to talk any more about the synopsis, but I want to talk to you about my feelings about this book. First of all, this book talks about motherhood in a way that is so beautiful, so raw, so real. Rachel really does feel like she's a mother to born. And because of the way Born is, Born is an amorphous thing. He can turn into things. This world is just full of monsters. And Born basically is a monster. But Rachel believes that he's a person. And Rachel's love really is what permeates this whole entire book. And that doesn't take away from the fact that Rachel is a bad ass. And I think that that's one of the parts that really got me about this book is that usually when we talk about mothers in sci-fi, mothers are either evil, not present, or they kind of are turned into like this Virgin Mary like trope where a mother is like all the significance signifies love and she's like this nurturing thing. But we never kind of have both a badass, strong female protagonist that is also a mother and Rachel is that. And the way that she deals with grief, the way she deals with loss, the way she tries to teach Born and how she makes mistakes and how willing she is to forgive is the heart and soul of this book. I feel that what sets this book aside for me for the rest of Jeff Vandermeer's works is the fact that he really delves into human emotion in a positive way. Because if you read Annihilation, you see that there is kind of a cold separation aspect to Jeff Vandermeer writing those characters to the point he doesn't give them names. In fact, I read a novella last month from Jeff Vandermeer where he also didn't give the characters names. In this book, we have a name, we have a character that has a past that loves, that hurts, that 
that that that that feels and she is incredible and the way that she loves her love her hope her her ability to deal with those emotions with with loss and her just her perseverance her perseverance through tragedy to through her to through trauma her ability to forgive is the most beautiful hopeful thing that i think i have ever read in my life and that is saying so much like i said i i have a whole vlog where i actually read this book and you get my raw emotions when i finish this and i say that actually this book is now tied in the first spot with el eterno oscuro for the for my favorite book of all time and i think it's because the Rachel and the main character in El Eterno Oscuro have something in common which is this unwavering faith and belief in the good of people and in the good of anything, in the good of nature, the good of humanity, the good of the world and even though they're faced with the most horrific events possible, even though everything is against them, Rachel never gives up hope that things can be better and that she can make them better. And I love that. I love I love her motherly side. I love how she is as a partner. I I love how this book discusses what it's like to be in a relationship where there is no trust and how you build trust within a relationship that is broken and how forgiveness is a factor. I'm not saying that you should forgive everything, but in this book what happens it just it's beautiful it's beautiful i think jeff vandermeer did a very good job of capturing a multifaceted human a, a complete human that is a woman and, and i feel that that is missing from a lot of science fiction i think in a lot of science fiction sadly humans and women are two-dimensional characters and i i feel that i know rachel i feel that i see rachel's every day i feel that i that that jeff vandermeer was able to tap into something so realistic so beautiful so feminine i'm gonna say it, it is feminine it's so beautifully feminine and and how that ties into nature and 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 how women have power to change things because we are women i don't know if that makes sense i don't i don't want to make like i don't want to make it seem like like i think that we don't live in a patriarchal society <laughs> we do but i think just vandermeer really taps into a very feminist book here and, and I love it. I love, I, I just love everything about this book. Every single thing about this book. Now this is a weird ass book. This is still Jack Vandermeer. There are things in here where I'm still like, what was, what was that, you know? But I don't care because the parts that I care about, the parts that are beautifully written, just spoke to my spirit, spoke to my soul, spoke to me as a woman. It spoke to me as a woman that wants to be a mother. I also love that this is an older character because and it's not anything to do with YA I know that it always sounds like I hate on YA but no it's the fact that women as badasses seem to have an expiration date Rachel doesn't have an expiration date women don't have expiration dates we can be heroes from 0 to 60 okay well okay maybe not 0 because you know we're babies um but you know I like that. I like that she continues to be a hero up until the very end. And she does it not only through her physical capabilities, but through her emotional capabilities and through her ability to heal and through her ability to love. And I just, I get emotional thinking about this book because I feel that this is a character that most, that a lot of women should read about. We should read about more characters like Rachel. And I'm really just in love with this book. That's the reality. It's It beat out every single book that I've read this year. And that's awesome.
a lot. All right, well, <laughs> I think that uh, my camera is flashing at me. How strange. I should really get more batteries for this camera. But anyway, thank you so much for watching. Thank you for uh, being interested in my thoughts about this book. If you pick it up, please let me know. If you have any inkling to pick it up after you've seen this video, please let me know down in the comments. And before my camera dies, I'm going to bid you adieu with a friendly reminder that I post videos every Monday, Wednesdays, and Fridays, and sometimes if I feel a little bit extra throughout the week and the weekend. And yes, without any further ado, I bid you adieu, and I will see you in another galaxy far, far away. Thank you guys for watching. Bye.